Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to do a library haul for you guys. So we are currently like hella snowed in <laughs> here. We were snowed in all weekend. It's currently snowing again right now as I'm filming on top of the snow that's still there from this weekend. So when I checked the weather and saw that huge storm front coming through, I was like, I got to get myself to the library. So that's what I did. Uh, so in addition to watching the Tom Holland celebrity lip sync battle Rihanna clip like 8 million times, I've been reading some wonderful library books this weekend. So first one up is A Room Away From The Wolves, I hate that glare, by Nova Rensuma. I loved Nova Rensuma's first book, which won an Edgar. This is the story of Sabina or Bina, who after some trouble with her mother's new husband and step family, decides she's going to, well, she runs away to New York because basically her mom kicks her out. And so she leaves for Catherine House, which is the place that her mother once ran away to when her mother was much younger, that she's heard story about stories about her whole life. But once Bina gets there, she realizes that like something is going on. Some not exactly normal things start happening. She has to sign a confidentiality agreement. When she gets there, a family is looking for a girl who's supposed to live there. But the girl has gone missing only like 20 minutes later she runs into her in the hallway. So like secrets are going on, sketchy things are happening. I've already started this one in case you can't tell. This is the one I started this weekend. It's really, really good. It's like urban, magical realism, but creepy. Like there are secrets are coming. I do want a trigger warning. There, the first like two chapters of this book include what appears to be an attempted suicide, although the person does survive. That's part of like the creepy magic thing. Um, but it is kind of a graphic portrayal of something that until the end is is legitimately depicted as something that's a suicide. So that might be something that's going to bother you, especially uh, because it comes literally right at the very front. And then I'm going to go through these in like vague order of how I hope to get to them, except for the nonfiction. There's one nonfiction that one's just going to come at the end. I'm like going to probably slowly pick my way through that one as my bedtime book. Uh, but next up, I have There There by Tommy Orange. I really love this cover. This is the story. This is a multi-generational story, which I love, of 12 individuals all traveling to the big Oakland powwow. Um, there are interconnecting storylines. There's intergenerational trauma. There's success stories and creative stories and I'm just really really looking forward to seeing how this stacks up. I don't read a lot of literary fiction but Tommy Orange writes about uh, Native Americans living in urban cities and I just think that that's a really really awesome modern necessary fictional take that we need to see more and more of. So the fact that this has won so many awards and it's crossed my path so many times I'm really really excited to get to this one. I was really surprised kind of when I saw it at the like new release shelf at my library because I'm on the holds list and the holds list is super long but my library does this thing where they have that like one shelf and you're not allowed to pull holds from it because you have to like go in to get it's like for people who are just there to browse and like risk your luck and maybe find a book and I found it and I'm so glad so I was able to go on and cancel my place and hold mine. Next up we have another YA book. This is A Heart in a Body in the World by Deb Coletti. I really like this cover. Um, I really like Deb Coletti's work and I have heard good things about this one from people who I trust their like YA opinions. This is the story of Annabelle who is literally running her way across the country. Very, It's very like Forrest Gumpian only she's got her family with her. Her grandpa and her brothers are following behind her kind of keeping an eye on her and being her media team and just doing kind of all of those things while she's literally running all day. She's literally running to escape her problems, like not metaphorically, she's literally trying to run away from this really tragic backstory. It's obviously not given away in the cover copy, but it's hinted at there being some kind of family loss. And if I know Deb Coletti, she writes really sad books very, very well. So I'm really looking forward to see how this pans out. Of course, people attach different meanings to what Annabelle is doing. She becomes kind of this like de facto protest leader, counterculture icon kind of person while she's literally just trying to run away from tragedy in her past. So I'm just really, really looking forward to this one. I picked it up because obviously it kind of reminded me of that part of Forrest Gump. And for all of the problematic parts of that movie, I really love it. I love that movie a lot. Um, so I picked up this one that combined with the fact that it's by Deb Coletti. And that is funny because I picked up this next one because it also reminded me of another thing, another piece of media. This is The Holy Ghost Speak Easy and Revival by Ter Terry Roberts. This is about the Holy Ghost Revival, which is a tent 
revival that travels from small town to small town, um, spreading the word of the Lord and all of that. I have a really big interest in like tent revivals and revival tours and the kind of religious fervor and religious practice that goes into them. I think it's like an offshoot of my interest in cults and other fringe religions. But what I also really love is that usually revival culture goes hand in hand with like con artists or as in this case, other Ill illegal things, a speakeasy. Uh, this, the Holy Ghost Revival is touring during Prohibition. And so alongside this big Holy Church production tent revival comes a bunch of illegal liquor uh, until one day they run into a very uh, overzealous sheriff who realizes that maybe not all is as it seems and they have to kind of figure out how to navigate and make the money they need to make in the small town while also having the cops hot on their heels. For those of you who don't know, there's an Alan Menken musical starring Raul Esparza called Leave of Faith that's actually based on a Steve Martin movie of the same name that is about basically this. It's a tent revival that's masking a con artist. He like goes around performing miracles. His name's Jonas Nightingale. And he goes around performing miracles, but he's actually a con artist until one day he gets to a small town and there's a sheriff who discovers him and blah, blah, blah. Like, so it's basically, I picked this up and I read this cover copy and I went, holy shit, that's Leap of Faith, but in a book. So I picked it up and I'm going to read it and I hope it's good. It could be great. It could be really bad. We'll see. I hope it's not really bad. Fingers crossed. And then the very last book, the nonfiction book that, like I said, I'm probably just going to keep like on my bedside or in my kitchen and it'll be my like pick up whenever I have a couple spare minutes book is Good and Mad, The Revolutionary Power of Women's Anger by Rebecca Traister. If you've not heard of this book or seen it floating around, I really, really encourage you to pick it up. I've read some of the bits and pieces of this book that have been printed elsewhere, but this is basically Rebecca Traister looking at the political power of women's anger, like it says in the subtitle. She makes a point in the introduction to say that she's not necessarily looking at women's anger from like a psychological standpoint she's not necessarily looking at it from like a sociological standpoint she's literally just looking at almost like past and forgotten instances in which women's rage and anger and the action that that anger has spurred forth has caused political upheaval mostly in our country i hope she gets a couple of examples of things that have happened abroad in there because i know off the top of my head a couple of really good especially more modern examples but i'm just really looking forward to this one there's already i've kind of already started it you can see there's just like a couple of flags I've got, I'm getting chills like every other page reading this book. If you identify as female, if you have someone in your life who identifies as female and you are angry and you're having a hard time wrestling with that anger or you feel bad about that anger or you're not sure what to do with that anger, I really think that Good and Mad is a really, really good place to go next. And that's my library haul, friends. Those are all the books that have been keeping me company through these snowy, snowy days. Let me know down below what you're reading, what your favorite, like, book to movie not like adaptations but like is there a thing that reminds you of another thing and that's why you picked it up the first time i always think that's really interesting so yeah leave me comments down below give me an emoji just to let me know that you watched all the way through if you don't have the energy to leave a full comment i know that can be hard otherwise i will catch you guys later come talk to me on the internet all about books and take care of yourselves take care of each other and have happy reading